Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 5 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam preparation. For this lesson, we're going to cover the T1E section from the question pool, which includes control operator and control types, control operator requirements, eligibility, designation of control operators, privileges and duties, control points, local, automatic, and remote control location of control operators. Alright, the first question. When is an amateur station permitted to transmit without a control operator? This is an easy answer. It's never. The control operator is the guy who is legally responsible for the conduct of the station. So it's a licensed radio amateur who is responsible to ensure that that station is operates within FCC regulations. So an amateur station is never permitted to transmit without a control operator. Who may a station licensee designate to be the control operator of an amateur station? The answer on the exam is only a person for whom an amateur operator primary station license grant appears in the FCC database or who is authorized for alien reciprocal operation. Now that's pretty much just a fancy way of saying any a, a licensed an FCC licensed amateur radio operator in the United States or an amateur radio operator from another country with whom the United States has an agreement that allows them to operate with their license in the United States. So only a person for whom an amateur operator primary station license appears in the FCC database or who is authorized for alien reciprocal operation. Who must designate the station control operator? Well, the thing to take out of this question is the station control operator and the station licensee is the one who designates who the control operator is. Now a station licensee can designate himself as a control operator but the station licensee is responsible. Just remember, whoever you put behind your radio, you are responsible for that person. What determines the transmitting privileges of an amateur station? Well, transmitting privileges are determined by license class, so different license classes have different privileges. The license class of the control operator is what determines the transmitting privileges of that station at that time. Now, if the station licensee and the control operator are two separate individuals. It's the control operator who, is, who cannot exceed his license privileges. What is an amateur station control point? Well, this is another easy question. A control point is essentially wherever the control operator function is performed. So wherever the control operator is controlling the transmitter, that is the control point. Now, the only one legitimate exception to this is when the station is under automatic control, and we'll get into that in the next question. Under what type of control do APRS network digipeters operate? All right, first off, APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System, and it's basically a series of transmitters that communicate, um, or transceivers that communicate a location and a piece of information like a weather report or you can do text messages through them, or a bunch of, you can even link into the internet through them. However, since they operate pretty much on a 24-7 basis, it's really difficult to have a human being behind the control panel of an of a APRS station or a repeater or another type of beacon station that operates on a 24-7 basis. So these types of stations fall under what they call automatic control. And what this does, it allows the station to operate without a control operator present but still conform to the FCC rules required for operation. So essentially there's some automatic shutoff or there's some way that a control operator can control it from afar that will allow it to um, prevent um, basically violating FCC rules. So under what conditions or what, or what type of control do APRS at DigiPeters operate? The answer is automatic control. When the control operator is not the station licensee, who is responsible for the proper operation of the station? Well, remember that if the control operator and the station licensee are two separate hams, they are both licensed hams, which means they are both equally responsible if something goes wrong. So just remember, if you designate another ham to be the control operator for your station and they break the rules, you are both in violation. Which of the following is an example of automatic control? Now, we talked about this a few questions ago, so this should be getting uh, old hat at this point. A repeater station or repeater operation is an example of something that would be under automatic control. So whenever the control operator is not at the control point, the station is under automatic control in order to conform with the FCC rules. So of the following choices or of the possible choices of this question, repeater operation is the one that would fall under automatic control. 
What type of control is being used when the control operator is at the control point? This is called local control. So whenever you use a handheld or you are sitting in front of your transceiver and you are manipulating the controls of that transceiver, you are in local control of that station. So what type of control is being used for when the control operator is at the control point? It is local control. Which of the following is an example of remote control as defined in part 97? The answer to the question is operating the station over the internet. Now we've talked about a di couple different types of station control um, as far as what your responsibility is as a control operator. Um, there's automatic control which is essentially safeguards for stations that operate on a 24-7 basis like repeaters, digipeaters, and beacon stations. There's local control for when you are physically at the control point manipulating the controls of the transceiver. And now we have remote control. Now some radios have the ability to be controlled by other radios or through the internet. And when this happens, you're controlling, the, you're manipulating the controls of the transceiver, but you're just doing it from afar through a second device, like the radio, another radio or the internet. And when you do this, this is called remote control. So this is kind of the same idea as manipulating like a car or a, an airplane through a, a remote. However, you're just manipulating a radio instead. So when you're not at the control point, but you're manipulating the controls of a transceiver from a remote location through another device, that is called remote control. Who does the FCC presume to be the control operator of an amateur station unless documentation to the contrary is in the station records? This is a common sense question. The station licensee is always the default operator. So if you allow somebody to operate your radio as a control operator, make sure you write something down in your logbook to specify that. So the default is always the station licensee. When, under normal circumstances, may a technician class licensee be the control operator of a station operating in an exclusive extra class operator segment of the amateur bands? The answer is pretty easy. It's at no time. So never. So if you are a technician class control operator, you can only operate within the bounds of your technician class pr license privileges. So you cannot go into the general class or an extra class seg uh, privilege segment of the amateur bands. So at no time can a technician class control operator operate in the extra class segment of the amateur bands. All right, now it's time for the T1E quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number one through 12. When you're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com and click on the exam answers page. Go to the T1E section and check your answers. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if it's a little bit too fast, just go ahead and pause the video and take all the time you need. All right, let's get started with the quiz. Question one. When is an amateur station permitted to transmit without a control operator? A. When using automatic control, such as in the case of a repeater. B. When the station licensee is away and another licensed amateur is using the station. C, when the transmitter station is an auxiliary station, or D, never. Question two, who may a station licensee designate to be the control operator of an amateur station? A, any U.S. citizen or registered alien. B, any family member of the station licensee. C, any person over the age of 18. Or D, only a person for whom an amateur operator primary station license grant appears in the FCC database or who is authorized for alien reciprocal operation. Question three, who must designate the station control operator? A, the station licensee, B, the FCC, C, the frequency coordinator, or D, the ITU. Question four, what determines the transmitting privileges of an amateur station? A, the frequency authorized by the frequency coordinator, B, the class of operator license held by the station licensee, C, the highest class of operator license held by anyone on the premises, or D, the class of operator license held by the control operator. Question 5. What is an amateur station control point? A, the location of the station's transmitting antenna. B, the location of the station transmitting apparatus. C, the location at which the control operator function is performed. Or D, the mailing address of the station licensee. Question 6. Under one type of control do APRS network digipeters operate? A. Automatic, B. Remote, C. Local, or D. Manual? Question 7. When the control operator is not the station licensee, who is responsible for the proper operation of the station? A. 
all licensed amateurs who are present at the operation, B, only the station licensee, C, only the control operator, D, the control operator and the station licensee are equally responsible. Question 8. Which of the following is an example of automatic control? A, repeater operation, B, controlling the station over the internet, C, using a computer or other device to automatically send CW, or D, using a computer or other device to automatically identify. Question 9. What type of control is being used when the control operator is at the control point? A, radio control, B, unattended control, C, automatic control, or D, local control. Question 10. Which of the following is an example of remote control as defined in Part 97? A. Repeater operation. B. Operating the station over the internet. C. Controlling a model aircraft, boat, or car by amateur radio. Or D. All of these choices are correct. And question 11. Who does the FCC presume to be the control operator of an amateur station unless documentation to the contrary is in the station records? A. The station custodian. B. The third party participant. C. The person operating the station equipment or D, the station licensee. Question 12. When, under normal circumstances, may a technician class licensee be the control operator of a station operating in an exclusive extra class operator segment of the amateur bands? A, at no time. B, when operating a special event station. C, as part of a multi-operator contest team. Or D, when using a club station whose trustee is an extra class operator licensee. And that concludes our T1E lesson. So now that you're done with the quiz, go to handwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page, and look under the T1E section to get the answers to the quiz. And until next time in lesson six, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.